What do you get when you mix a kangaroo with a wolf and a tiger? Well, you guessed right, a Tasmanian tiger. And that is you, my friend. As strange as you look, you and your ancestors were once a dominant member of the Australian ecosystem before you went extinct around the mid-1900s. And today, we'll take a deep dive into why that is, what your life was like as a Tasmanian tiger, and if there are any possibilities of you making a comeback. Your story begins either in New Guinea, Australia, or Tasmania, which were the only places where Tasmanian tigers could be found. As a Tasmanian tiger, your life begins as most others do, well, with birth. Unfortunately, since your kind is now extinct, all we have to learn about your reproductive behavior is through archaeological and historical evidence. From what we can piece together, your mother and father could have likely been monogamous, true love at its finest. With that said, professionals within the scientific field still aren't sure about the fine details of how your parents would have mated. Well, I mean, I'm sure they've got a few guesses. Mm. Some evidence tells us that Tasmanian tiger couples mated year-round, although there was a peak in the breeding season during the summertime. After an extremely short gestation period of around 42 days, your mother happily popped you out so that you too could experience the horrors of the world. Don't feel too special though, as Tasmanian tigers typically give birth to litters of around two to four cubs, meaning you'll be part of a large family with a high chance of having a very annoying sibling. Interestingly enough, you and your family are marsupials, meaning that you and your young siblings are typically kept in protective pouches with your parents for the first portion of your lives. In your case, you and your siblings would have likely stayed attached by the hip, or rather by the teat to your mother until you were around two months of age. It's probably for the best that you stayed in your mom's pouch as you would have been undeveloped, probably looking like a piece of raw chicken that your mom was carrying home from the grocery store. After your awkward phase, don't worry, we all have one, you develop a fearsome appearance. Firstly, you have a lustrous, sandy-colored coat that is thick and protective. You would have also had a long tail that stuck straight out to the ground, almost like a makeshift walking stick. On your back, you would have developed a series of around 15 to 20 stripes, which would make you look like a tiger. Additionally, regardless of if you're a boy or a girl, you would have some form of pouch. Don't worry, boys, you wouldn't be caring for young with yours. Instead, yours acts as a protective sheath for your private bits. You also have the cutest ears that perk upright, almost like a well-groomed lapdog. Don't worry, though, as these absolutely adorable features are outweighed by your 46 sharp teeth which you use for shredding and ripping meat from the bones of your prey. Moving forward in time, you've grown up, separated from your mum, and you've become quite the killer. Your coat is now developed, and you have the appearance of a wild dog with fearsome black tiger stripes on your back. In fact, it's thought that Tasmanian tigers such as you would have been apex predators in your natural habitat. Even though you have the means to kill almost any animal, you also have a shy streak which makes you seem elusive and even dangerous to humans. Due to your natural shyness, which is so charming by the way, you are a nocturnal hunter, meaning you wait until the darkness of night to hunt. You're also a very sneaky animal, which is one of the reasons why you're so dangerous. With this, you tend to sneak around in the night, lurking around your prey until you can get a good strike in. Of the many options in Australia's wilderness buffet, your favorite choices were marsupials, such as kangaroos and wallabies, rodents and birds. I mean, look at him. Catching just one of these rotund fellas could last you for a few days at least, assuming they don't roll away from you. After annoying farmers began moving into your territory, you would also have begun chomping down on livestock animals, such as sheep, much to their dismay. Living in the wild is a hard feat though, meaning you sometimes don't get to choose to eat your favorite meals every day. Instead, you happily scrounged about, looking for anything you can sink your fangs into. Some sources claim that you may have even resorted to scavenging behavior when the time called for it, but others think you were too distinguished for that kind of behavior. That stuff is for the Tasmanian Devils. Although it wasn't uncommon for you to be seen during the day, you would have typically been sleeping or hiding in some form of den or burrow. Most Tasmanian tigers found caves or burrows to sleep in, but you might have been fancy and found some sort of hollow log if you were lucky. Now it's time to pull out our history books and take a deep dive into the history of your ancestors. Way back before any humans came to dominate the continent, 
Your distant relatives once ran amok on the mainland of Australia and New Guinea. They were free to hunt and live as they pleased, with relatively little pushback from any competitors or predators. Unfortunately, this happy existence was cut short with the introduction of two devastating things, humans and dingoes. Yep, you heard me right. Your ancestors were taken down by some dogs and some glorified apes. The introduction of these competitors forced your ancestors to flee to Tasmania, which is where the last populations of you guys were before your untimely demise. Everywhere you went in Australia or New Guinea, you would have likely ran into a dingo or a human who wanted nothing more but to kill you. Humans, being as emotional as they are, were tired of you messing around with their livestock animals. The blame isn't all on you though, as many sources now note that you likely didn't play a huge role in killing livestock animals. But hey, the deed has already been done, and there's no longer any way for you to use that as a point of argument as to why you shouldn't be hunted. Because, you know, you're extinct. Anyways, this often provoked the humans to deliberately hunt your species whenever possible. Dingoes, on the other hand, didn't have a great reason. Maybe they were just hungry, or bored, or resentful of their boring coats. After going through all the trouble of being pushed out to Tasmania, your ancestors faced new problems. Humans. <clears throat> well, I guess those are old problems. Once again, as people began to move into Tasmania, they blamed the Tasmanian tigers for any and all livestock deaths. This led the government to create a system of bounties. These bounties allowed people to hunt Tasmanian tigers with the promise of a monetary reward. Hunters would be paid for whole bodies and even skins. Talk about some Cruella de Vil behavior. By the time people started hunting your ancestors, there were projected to be only around 5,000 of your folks left on the island. As you can probably guess, statistics were not in their favor. This caused their populations to dwindle to drastically low numbers. Unfortunately, the game of population survival is not played like golf, meaning low numbers were not a good sign. Over the next few years, this war of attrition between humans and Tasmanian tigers continued until your populations lowered to threateningly low levels. Eventually, in a last-ditch effort, Australian officials flipped their story and were like, oh my gosh, we totally need to save the Tasmanian tigers. They're dying, and it's our duty to keep them alive. Ironically, these sentiments starkly contrasted the current Tasmanian tiger hunting regimes of the time. As fast as they could, Australian officials began to capture Tasmanian tigers in an attempt to set up captive breeding systems across the country. In fact, some were sent even further so that the effort to maintain populations could be supported. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, captive reproduction was largely unsuccessful, which bode bad news as deaths began to soar. I guess you could say making babies in a cage isn't the most romantic setting. To cap off this long story in the most devastating way, the last Tasmanian tiger in captivity passed away in an Australian zoo in 1936. For the following years, the Tasmanian tiger took on a Bigfoot-like role in society. From the 1910 to 1980s, there have been countless reports of people seeing Tasmanian tigers out in the wilderness. Due to the number of these claims, most scientists believe that the tigers truly did live on in the wild for some years after the death of the last captive tiger. With dwindling sightings, it's unfortunately thought that the Tasmanian tigers have indeed gone fully extinct, likely somewhere between the 1940s and 1970s. Thanks to the modern marvels of science, there might be a future for the Tasmanian tiger. Don't get too excited though. We're not planning on bringing back tiger zombies or Franken-tigers soon, but scientists might be able to use cutting-edge techniques to produce hybrid animals with Tasmanian tiger DNA. Using the remains of preserved Tasmanian tiger specimens, researchers think that they'll be able to use gene editing techniques such as CRISPR to insert Tasmanian tiger genes into the genome of their closest living relatives. From here, the altered Tasmanian tiger Franken cells could be placed in an embryo to produce a hybrid between the two animals. In the end, your life as a Tasmanian tiger would have truly been a wild ride. From your birth to your appearance, you were truly a unique animal. Due to the oppressive powers of man, however, you and your ancestors are unfortunately gone, which only leaves us to speculate on your existence. While researchers work a way to find DNA-based solutions to bring you back, we can take some time to marvel at your truly amazing history.